Hello everyone and welcome to week 5. This week we're going to start looking at images and how to analyze them. However, before we properly begin, there are some concepts that we need to go over. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about data types. Now all digital data is stored in bits. Bits can only have one of two values. They can either be true, which is represented with a value of 1, or false, which is represented as a value of 0. Now if a bit can only be a 1 or a 0, how do we store larger values? Well, as we will see in a little while, this is done by grouping bits together. For example, if we wanted to store the number 9, we would need to join 4 bits together. And I'll talk a bit more about this later. Now the question that I want to answer in this video is how the computer knows what the group of bits represent. For example, how should the computer know if the data is numerical or text? And the answer here comes down to the data type. The data type of a variable tells the computer how to represent the data. In other words, the data type specifies the size of the data in bits, as well as information like whether the data is numerical or text. Now in MATLAB, the data type of a variable is displayed in the workspace as its class. Let me switch over to MATLAB to show you what I mean. Now if I just declare a variable, let's say a equals 10, you see in this column here that the class is a double. Now if you don't see the class column, you might need to resize the columns a little bit. And if you still can't see it, right click on any of the columns in the workspace and make sure that class is checked. There are four main data types that you might encounter. These are binary data, which have a class of logical in MATLAB, integers, which might have a class like uint8 or int16, text data, which has a class of char, and floating point format numbers, which have a class like double. Let's take a look at each of these data types. First up is binary data or logical data in MATLAB. We've actually introduced the first data type already. The value of each bit is binary data. Now this data type can only have values of true or false. Now, since this data is stored in a single bit, logical data takes up the least amount of memory. Now you'll see this data type when you perform logical comparisons, and we'll be using these operations a lot when we identify cells and images. But that is giving away next week's material. Now in MATLAB, you can create a variable containing this data type using the functions true or false. So let's switch over to MATLAB and try it out. I'm going to create a new variable here. Let's say L equals true. Note that the true here is a lowercase p. And when I run this command, MATLAB returns a value of true, which is displayed here with a value of 1. Now similarly, if I now say L equals false, you can see that the value here has changed to 0. Now you can also create logical arrays by including the size in the arguments of true or false. So for example, if I wanted to create a 3 by 4 array of trues, I could enter in L equals true 3 comma 4. The next data type that we will look at is the integer. Now integers are whole numbers. This data type does not support decimal places, hence its name. Integers are stored in memory by grouping multiple bits together. And there are actually two types of integers, signed integers, which can be either positive or negative numbers, and unsigned integers, which can only be positive numbers. Now we are really only going to be looking at the unsigned integer here, because this is the data type that digital cameras use to store image data. Here is a picture representation of an unsigned integer. As I mentioned, an integer consists of multiple bits, this example here shows an integer that is composed of 4 bits, so we would call this a 4-bit unsigned integer. The way the integers represent large numbers is by using the position of each bit to represent a power of 2. So the rightmost bit here has a value of 2 to the 0, the next bit to the left has a value of 2 to the 1, then 2 to the power of 2, and 2 to the power of 3. Now to get the value of the integer, you simply multiply the value of the bit by the power of 2 of its position, then sum up all the values. And then remember, a true bit has an equivalent value of 1, and a false bit has an equivalent value of 0. So this integer here, 1001, is equivalent to 
1 times 2 to the power of 0 plus 0 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 0 times 2 to the power of 2 and 1 times 2 to the power of 3. Which is 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 8 which equals 9. The values that an unsigned integer can represent starts from 0 and goes up to 2 to the power of n minus 1, where n is the number of bits used to define the number. And if you're wondering why there is a minus 1, that's because the smallest value of the integer starts at 0. So our example 4-bit integer can hold values from 0 to 2 to the power of 4 minus 1, which is 15. In MATLAB, you can declare an unsigned integer using the functions that begin with uint and then the size where size is either 8, 16, 32, or 64. So for example, if you wanted to create a 16-bit unsigned integer, you would use the uint16 function. Let's switch over to MATLAB. Let's create an unsigned 16-bit integer with a value of 100. To do so, we can type in i equals uint16, open parentheses, 100, close parentheses. And notice the class of this variable is uint16. Now, as I mentioned, unsigned integers have minimum and maximum values that they can represent. So what happens if you try to create an integer with an invalid value? Well, let's try creating a 16-bit unsigned integer with a value of minus 10. And remember, unsigned integers cannot have negative values. So if we try to enter i equals uint16 minus 10, MATLAB simply sets the value to the minimum value, which is 0. Now let's try going the other way and create an integer with too high a value. Now the maximum value of a 16-bit unsigned integer is 2 to the power of 16 minus 1, which is 65,535. So let's just try creating a variable that's much larger than that. So i equals u in 16. And let's just say let's create a variable that has a value of 100,000. And you'll see that MATLAB does the same thing here. It caps it to the maximum value of the integer, which is 65,535. Now, signed integers work a little bit differently. I'll just introduce these briefly, but I'm not going to go into too much detail here because we simply won't be using this data type very much. Now, signed integers in MATLAB use a format known as two's complement. Basically, the leftmost bit here indicates whether the number is positive or negative. You can see that when the bit is true, it represents a negative number. And the values um, of a signed integer can range between negative 2 to the power of n minus 1. That's one bit shorter because one of the bits has now been uh, co-opted to be the sign. And 2 to the power of n minus 1 minus 1. Let's move on to the next data type, which is text data, and has the class car, set for character. This data type is used to represent text data, so typically letters, numbers, but not numerical data, or punctuation. The underlying data type is an unsigned integer, but it's translated by the computer into text using the ASCII table. Now this ASCII table is a standardized format, so every computer will interpret text in the same way. Very briefly, here are the first few values of the ASCII table. Notice that each letter basically has a value attached to it. For this example, notice that uppercase A has a value of 65, uppercase B has a value of 66, uppercase C has a value of 67, now lowercase A has a value of 97, and lowercase B has a value of 98. So let's go back to MATLAB. Now as you already know, we can create variables with the car data type by simply using apostrophes. So for example, we could say str equals apostrophe, capital A, capital B, capital C, apostrophe. And when I run this, you can see that the variable has been created with a class of car. Now since each letter is essentially stored as a number, we can convert this car variable back into an unsigned integer by using the function uint8 for an, un for an unsigned 8-bit integer. And notice that when I do so, MATLAB now displays these values as numbers, right? And these correspond to the value of those letters in the ASCII table. And if you remember, capital A had a value of 65, capital B had a value of 66, capital C had a value of 67. 
So very quickly, here's the ASCII table again. You can see that those values correspond to the letters as I mentioned earlier. Finally, let's have a look at the floating point number format. Now this format again holds numerical data, but in contrast to integers, this format allows decimal places and negative numbers to be represented. Now this is also the default numerical data type in MATLAB. And typically the format that you will be seeing a lot of in MATLAB is the double, which is a 64-bit number. Here is the data scheme for a double. Notice that it has one bit for the sign, 11 bits for the exponent, and 52 bits to hold significant numbers or the fraction. Now in MATLAB, doubles are created by default whenever you type in a number. So like we have already been doing, let's say we create a variable a equals 10. This has the class double. Okay, so why do we care about all of this? Well, the data type of a number will affect the result of arithmetic operations. Now I don't want to go through every single data type, so let's just look at unsigned integers and doubles, which are the data types that you will encounter most often in image analysis. So let's start by declaring a new unsigned 16-bit integer with a value of 25. Now let's see what happens if we try to divide this integer by 2. And we get an answer back of 13. Right? Remember that unsigned integers cannot hold decimal places, and so the closest number to i divided by 2 is 13. Now let's see what happens if we try to subtract um, 30 from this number, making it negative. So i minus 30. And again, you'll see that basically um, MATLAB will stop at the minimum value of the integer, which is 0. Right, as you can imagine, the same thing happens if we try to increase the value of this integer um, beyond its maximum value. You'll see that MATLAB will cap it at its maximum value. Now, it is important to remember that integer arithmetic works differently because, as we will see in the next video, image data is stored as an unsigned integer. This means that if you want to carry out arithmetic operations with images, such as dividing one image with another, you will need to convert the values to double. And you can do this using the function double. So, for example, let's convert our variable i into a double. You can see this that the new variable d that was created here has a class of double. And now we can do the same kind of operations with d and we can get decimal places. 